So now we have this uh, correspondence between polarization and spin. Right? It seems that there is some similarity. Let's first look at the mathematics that describes the behavior of polarization. Now, the mathematics that describes the behavior of polarization is vectors. We know about vectors. For example, let's talk about vectors in a two-dimensional space. Okay, in the plane of this uh, screen, for example. Right. So this, you could think of a vector as an arrow like this. To start with, you can think of a vector as an arrow like this. We call this as a vector. Now, this a vector has its own existence in this plane. All right. It has its own. You can think of it as having a physical existence in this two-dimensional space. All right. Now, to understand it better, to analyze it, we can choose a coordinate system. We can choose a coordinate system. We choose an XY coordinate system called as the Cartesian coordinate system. XY. All right. Now, we can also choose what we call as base vectors. We can choose unit vectors along the coordinate axis. Right. We can choose a unit vector like this, X hat and Y hat. Okay. This X and X hat and Y hat can be called as base vectors. This can be called as base vectors. All right. Now, what's the importance? Uh, okay, what, what's one of the uses of these base vectors? The idea is that any vector in this plane can be written as a linear combination of these base vectors. All right. Any vector in this plane can be written as a linear combination of these vectors. Okay. For example, in this case, a vector can be written as sum of two vectors. It can be written as a resultant of two vectors. Or in other words, you can decompose a vector into two directions. Okay, you can write it as a resultant of two vectors, one in the x direction and the other in the y direction. Right? So you have got this a vector here. You can write it as a uh, resultant of two vectors, one in the x direction and one in the y direction. Right? So we are decomposing these vectors. So this vector you can call it as a x x hat and this as a y y hat. So this a vector can be written as a x x hat plus a y y hat. Okay. This a x is called the component of a vector along the x direction. Okay. And this a y is called the component of a vector along the y direction. In this case, this a vector has components along both x and y directions. All right. There's another way to write this. If you take, for example, x dot a, okay, x hat dot a vector, you see that this is equal to a x x dot x, x dot x is 1, these are unit vectors, x dot y is 0 because these are orthogonal, all right, so this is simply a x, all right, so what's one way to find these components of a vector, if you want to find the x component of a vector, what you do is that you project a vector along the x hat direction. Right. So, when, when I say project a vector along x hat direction, what I mean is that I take the scalar product, I take the dot product of a vector with x hat. Okay. So, a x can be written as x hat dot a vector. What does this mean? This means this a x is the projection, projection of a vector along x hat direction. So, if you want to take the projection of a vector along any particular direction. You just take the unit vector corresponding to that, that direction and construct the scalar product with the vector. That would be the projection. Okay, you could call a x as the component of a vector along the x direction. Right. So with, in this language, this a vector can be written as okay, a vector can be written as x hat dot a vector. Okay, this is the component of a vector along the x direction. So this is x hat dot a vector x hat plus y hat dot a vector in the y hat direction. Okay, it's exactly the same thing that I have written here. I have just decomposed the given vector uh, along the two directions. So we can write a vector, we can decompose a given vector. This is very important. This is something that we will be using in quantum mechanics also. Okay, so it's the same kind of logic will be used also in quantum mechanics. So the idea is that a vector can be decomposed into two vectors in a plane. Now, you can easily generalize it to three dimensions or four dimensions, whichever dimensions you like. All right? So, we live in a three-dimensional space. In three dimensions, we write a vector as a x x hat plus a y y hat plus a z z hat. Okay? Or we can write this as x hat dot a vector in the x direction plus 
y hat y hat dot a vector in the y direction plus z hat dot a vector in the z direction right so this logic can work for any number of dimensions okay this is fine we can easily extend it to any number of dimensions the basic logic can be extended to any number of dimensions so what what we have seen here is that we can decompose uh, a given vector in terms of the base vectors okay we can write a given vector as a linear combination of the base vectors right now the base vectors are not unique right there's nothing that tells us that you have to choose a particular set of vectors as base vectors right for example you could choose any set of orthogonal vectors right any two orthogonal vectors as base vectors okay for example i could choose another set of base vectors x hat prime and orthogonal to that okay we, for convenience we'll use orthogonal coordinate system and orthogonal to that we can use y hat prime okay so x y could be a good choice for base base vectors you could also choose x hat prime and y hat prime as base vectors all right now just as we decompose a vector in the x y basis we could also decompose a vector in the x prime y prime basis how do we do that we write a vector is equal to a let's write it like this x prime dot a vector this would give you the component of a vector along the x prime direction okay plus y prime dot a vector along the y prime direction so the choice of basis is not unique okay choice of basis is not unique right so we could uh, choose to decompose a given vector in terms of any set of basis vectors any set of basis vectors all right now you could also do another thing if you look at this x prime all right if you look at this x prime this x prime itself can be decomposed in terms of x and y this x prime direction it is a unit vector again in this plane in, in this plane okay you could decompose this x prime in terms of x and y also how do we do that you just use the same rule you could write x prime is equal to x hat dot x prime in the x hat direction plus uh, so this would be y hat y hat dot x prime in the y direction all right so x hat dot x prime will give you the component of x prime in the x direction okay and y hat dot x prime will give you the component of x prime in the y direction so since these are unit vectors this would be simply the cosine of the angle between them right this would be simply the cosine of the angle between them because we know that if you want to take a vector dot b vector it is modulus of a vector modulus of b vector cos theta okay so this can be further written as cos theta x hat plus cos theta or let's say cos 90 minus theta y hat let's now try to understand the qualitative description of the behavior of polarization okay so we are using we are doing this within the framework of classical electrodynamics we are not using the language of photons or quantum mechanics this is just good old classical electrodynamics okay so in classical electrodynamics an x prime polarized uh, and a light beam polarized in the x prime direction can be represented like this all right we are just giving the electric field here this is e0 x prime cos kz minus omega t okay. so the x prime here says that the oscillation of the electric field is in the x prime direction okay this is an x prime polarized beam and similarly y prime polarized beam can be represented the electric field part of it can be represented as e0 y prime cos kz minus omega t all right so the kz minus omega t here says that the direction of propagation is along the z axis okay the, it's, this, so this is an x prime polarized wave which is moving along the z direction okay let's look at the picture here we have got the x direction denoted by x hat we have got the y direction denoted by y hat we also have this x prime direction or x hat prime direction which is at which makes an angle 45 degree with the x axis all right and perpendicular to the x prime direction is the y prime direction all right so this makes an angle 45 degree with the y axis and it makes an angle 90 plus 45 with the x axis okay because this uh, angle is 90 
Now we know how to expand this x prime in terms of x and y. Okay, so that's what we just said before, but I will repeat it. This x prime can be written as x dot x prime in the x direction plus uh, x dot, sorry, this is the x component plus y dot x prime. This is the y component in the y direction. So what we are doing here is we are writing x prime as a resultant of two vectors. We are writing x prime as a resultant of two vectors, one vector like that and one vector like that. Okay. In the same way, we see that we can write y prime as a resultant of two vectors, one like that and the other one like that. Okay. You see that this vector is along the minus x direction. So that will this the, when when we write it, this will pick up an extra minus sign. That's just straightforward. So I'll, expl I'll explain just this. What is x dot x prime? We, we have already said that the angle between them is 45 degree. Okay. So this is these are unit vectors. So this is simply cos 45 x hat plus again the angle between x prime and y. Okay, x prime and y. The angle between them is also 45. So this is also cos 45 y hat. Okay. So this cos 45, we know that is 1 by root 2. This is 1 by root 2 x hat plus 1 by root 2 y hat. Okay. So this x prime can be written as 1 by root 2 x hat plus 1 by root 2 y hat. We have just written, we have just decomposed x prime into two vectors. Okay. 1 by root 2 x hat and 1 by root 2 y hat. So if I substitute this here, this expression becomes E0. E0 is still there. Okay. Cos Kz minus omega t is there in both expression. And instead of x prime, we have got 1 by root 2 x hat plus 1 by root 2 y hat. Okay. In the same way, we could also expand this y prime here. All right. And as I said, there will be a minus sign here because we are writing it as a resultant of two vectors. And one of the vectors is in the minus x direction. All right. Or you could just blindly do this. You could simply write this as Okay, we could, you could simply write this as y prime is equal to, we will have an x dot y prime, this is the component of y prime along the x direction, okay, plus y dot y prime, the component of y along, component of y prime along the y direction, alright. Now, if you take the angle between x dot, sorry, x and y prime. If you take the angle between x and y prime and just take the cosine of it, you'll get this minus sign. Right? So you could also do it just mechanically. Okay. So if you do that, you see that this can be written as minus 1 by root 2. So in the same way, we'll write uh, y prime. So this will be equal to minus 1 by root 2 x hat plus 1 by root 2 y hat. Okay. You substitute that here, you get e0 y prime cos kz minus omega t is equal to e0 minus 1 by root 2 x hat cos kz minus omega t plus 1 by root 2 y hat cos kz minus omega t. Okay. Now, if you look at this x prime polarization, right? if you look at this x prime polarization, you see that we are writing it as a linear combination of an x polarized beam and a y polarized beam. Right? What we have here is an x polarized beam, right? e0. Uh, x hat cos kz minus omega t is an x polarized beam. Similarly, e0 y hat cos kz minus omega t is a y polarized beam. So we are writing this x prime polarized beam as a resultant of uh, or as a linear combination of an, of an x polarized beam and a y polarized beam. Okay. In other words, an x prime polarized beam has components along the x direction as well as along the y direction. Okay. Now, if I send this to an X filter, I will get this component. So, there will be an output. And if I subject this, this to a Y filter, I will be getting this component. All right. And again, there will be, a, uh, there will be an output. All right. Similarly, we see that the Y prime polarization, okay, Y prime polarized beam can be written as a linear combination of two beams, one polarized along the X direction and the other polarized along Y, y direction. Right. For this reason, if I subject this y prime polarized beam to a y filter, I'll get this component, and if I subject it to an x filter, I'll be getting this component. All right. So this is how it works. Right now, in the triple filter arrangement, the triple filter arrangement that we had here. 
So this is a triple filter. We have got an X filter, X prime filter, Y filter. Okay. What happens here is that when the beam passes through an X filter, this is completely polarized in the X direction only. Okay. This is completely polarized in the X direction. All right. But when I pass it through an X prime filter, since X has a component along X prime direction, there will be an there will be something coming out of this. All right. Because X X has a component along the X prime direction also. Okay. This was our X direction. And this was our X prime direction. As we see, X prime dot X is not equal to zero, which means that X has a component along X prime direction. Okay. For this reason, there will be an output here. Right. Now, since X prime has a Y component, if I subject this to a Y filter, okay, as we saw here, this X prime has a Y component. All right. So if I subject this to a Y filter, there will be a, there will be an output, all right? Because X prime has a component along the Y direction. X prime has a component along Y direction. Okay. Since X prime has a component along Y direction, there will be some output here. This is what is happening. This is how we describe the behavior of uh, polaroids and polarization. Okay. All right. So the beam coming out of the first polaroid, polaroid is an X polarized beam, which can be regarded as a linear combination of an X prime polarized beam and a Y prime polarized beam. Okay. The second polaroid selects the X prime polarized beam, which can in turn be regarded as a linear combination of an X polarized and a Y polarized beam. Okay. Now since this has a component, it, since this beam can be written as a combination of a Y polarized and an X polarized beam, when I subject it to a Y filter, it will just filter out this component. Okay. Finally, the third polaroid selects the Y polarized component. This is what is happening here.